it's, it's, it's a little bit it's a, it's a little bit kind of insulting to your intelligence in some regards but i think if you need some initial motivation he's pretty good for it now he's doing all this nft stuff i kind of rent jumped off completely but i have to be honest and say i bought his books right i followed him quite often before when he was doing the vlog stuff and updated all the time and i watch would watch some of his seminars that he'd do where he would do speaking the gigs and whatnot and i thought it was really cool i followed him when he was doing the wine stuff earlier on but i kind of ran off it but i still think he's quite interesting in that regard and also the thing i like about gary v he can laugh at himself. He doesn't take himself too seriously. Tim Dillon fucking ripped into Gary V a few times on his podcast. And he even was able to take that in jest. And you know how brutal Tim Dillon can be. And he even kind of granted him an interview. I don't know if the interview's out yet, but in general. So I, I don't mind Gary V. I'm just going to put that out there. I know some people on a subreddit, on a, tip, on a Friday Kids subreddit, were like basically ripping into Gary V. But I don't mind him. But I think Brendan's ability to kind of be a chameleon and sort of kind of um, adapt to whatever platform he's on to basically make him seem like he's somewhat less of a narcissist and less full of himself than he actually is is pretty impressive so on this show he really comes across quite well even though you know what he's really like do you know what i mean it's really interesting so let's play this clip it's comedy especially with with my background man being, being an athlete and having cauliflower ears and full sleeve tattoos and i you know i dress like a, a, a fuck boy for lack of a better term yeah i'm a sneaker head you know i look yeah. ridiculous so you know, being this big... I'm, the fact I'm, that we both have backwards hat and teeth. I like, put on backwards. Minute, am I a fuck boy? Like, I, I, I got excited. I, I, I put on backwards just so we look... Ex- you know what's funny about that comment too? He somehow doesn't understand that people don't like him because of that. Like, this is an interesting thing, I think, in general. I've mentioned it previously. I think um, in order to be successful online, I've said it many times on here, I think it's really important that you kind of are really unself-aware, that you don't actually get why people don't like you and you kind of just tune it all out because for some reason he's worked into his head that people didn't like him in comedy or in whatever because he looked like the school bully or he looked like the jock that you you kind of never got along with and stuff which is really weird in my opinion because part of the reason or most reason why people don't like him is because he talks on a microphone for his career right for his livelihood and throughout all those years people have got to see his personality and they've kind of just got turned off from it. So they don't like him because of who he is as a person or because of what he wears, which is probably even worse. But for some reason, he actually thinks it's because of the cauliflower ears, because he's an alpha, all this sort of weird. It's like, no, mate, people don't like you because they, they think you're a lying piece of shit. Do you know what I mean? Um, they think you're a horrible person. You treat people badly. Um, you look down upon all this sort of stuff that you kind of see on the subreddit. That's why people don't like you, not because of your full sleeve tattoo. Which is really strange. Exactly. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, so, for, you know, when I first started, you know, I'm a tough sell man. Yeah, and I, I get and it. I get that. So yeah. my goal is the same. You know, that right. Exactly. Um, what's this, this commenter called? V- v- Vinikil or Vinikil says, dude, that shit doesn't matter. Um, if you're funny, you're funny. Exactly. It doesn't, it wouldn't matter if you'd have four seats. I remember Joe Rogan saying it once. The reason why he doesn't wear, um, the reason why he doesn't wear um, long sleeve shirts is because he doesn't want to. No, the reason why he doesn't wear short sleeves is because he doesn't want to show his tattoos and distract the crowd from it and look too burly. It's like it doesn't matter, man. If you're funny, you're funny. No one gives a shit what you wear on the stage, really. Um, really strange, really strange kind of, re- you know, rationalization. But anyway, it's the same I'm concept. Sorry to Go ahead. That right there, that little sentence, mm-hmm. and I get that, is the number one thing that I see for all the kids that are listening right now. I want to rewind that part. I know we don't edit, so you don't have to rewind it, but literally the, and I get that, I, so much has been like filled in for me from watching from afar, listening to you in this podcast. I believe that what you just said is the most important part of your success. I believe it's the most important part of my success. Mm -hmm. We have ambition, we have drive, we wanna make things happen, but fucking self-awareness. For you to say blah, 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 but I get that. Mm -hmm. For everybody who's listening, when you think the world doesn't get it and you're right and everyone's wrong, you're in deep shit. I've seen how that goes for right? guys. Right? Yeah, I'm, I'm very self-aware. So, you know, when I'm doing- No, you're not. No, you're not. You're not self-aware. You're the most unself-aware person in the fucking world. You're fucking suing a guy online because he dared to, I don't know, man. Um, what's, what's the thing, what's Martin Moose saying here? Actually, you know, look up comedian Joe Pes- Pescapo. He was a comedian that was very popular and then did stories and got huge. After that, everyone hated him. He wasn't funny at all. Okay, I'm not going to do it now for today's show, but I'm going to screenshot this chat and I'm going to do it for another one. But yeah, I'll, I'll check. Oh man, what happened there? 
Damn it, did I move it? Damn it. Where is it? There you go. Oh, shit, did I delete it by accident? Yeah, I did. I Obviously, I deleted it by accident. Obviously. Where is it? Okay, cool. Let's go back again. Bear with me one second. Bear with me one second. Fuck. Anyway, I'll, I'll remember it for next time. Let me take actually a picture of it on my phone. I'll, I'll take a picture and I'll remember it for next time. I won't do it now, but I'll do it another time. Um, take a picture of the chat here. Boom, boom. Cool. Let me get that finger back up again. Bear with me, bear with me, bear with me, bear with me. Do, 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 do. Exactly, Kablu. Self-aware people don't copyright strike. Exactly. <laughs> what? Self-awareness? No, you're not. <laughs> He's a fucking liar. That's what you are, mate. You're a fucking liar. And I know, because I lied too, mate. <laughs> Two can play that game, buddy. Two can play that game. Anyway, so let's just blow this up again and get ourselves back to where we started from. Bear with me a second. Come on. There we go. Let's go back. Where is it? Somewhere around here, wasn't it? Or was that? Was it here? Yeah, about here. Happen, but fucking self-awareness. For you to say very blah, blah, blah. But I get that, get it. And, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm very self-aware. So, you know, when I'm doing spots at the comedy store, I, again, I think maybe because, you know, I'm very uh, closely associated with Joe Rogan and Joey Diaz and yep. Tom you're Segura. Not, and you're not associated with Joe Rogan, by the way. Correction. Joe Rogan's responsible for giving you your career. Without Joe Rogan and Brian Callen, you would have no stand-up career at, to this extent. Not in general, because I still believe you probably would have got there anyway, but not to this level. Not the, as fast or as quick as trajectory, trajectory as he had. See, whenever I watch fucking Brendan, I can't speak myself. It fucking infects you, innit? That like fucking CTEs flying around the fucking air like fucking COVID. But regardless, the reason, again, another reason why people don't like him, because they feel like his success is completely unearned and it's all at the hands of Joe Rogan, but then he acts like it's not. But then clearly it is because the quality of what he does is terrible vis-a-vis -vis the fucking success that he has. It doesn't make any sense. All the specials are terrible. All of his content is fucking garbage. Yet he drives a Ferrari and lives in the fucking massive mansion. It doesn't make any sense. You know what I mean, nothing really adds up in that regard. So clearly there's some disconnect there between how he views stuff and people view him. But, you know, but regardless, but this idea about he's associated. No, Joe Rogan's responsible for giving you a career, friend. Giving you a career. And Crystal, the big dog. So... They would treat me a different way where really I shouldn't have been treated like that. And I, again, I'm very aware, like, I don't deserve this treatment. So I, You were I, like turtle in like entourage, like the, yeah, the halo effect. Yeah, I, dude, I was the punter on the football team. Like, I'm on the team, but I don't really. Do it's funny that he's never been back at a comedy store to the level that he was beforehand anyway. I just, I just can't imagine. For me anyway, the self-awareness thing is what really fucks him because I remember there being a story about him um parking his car in like i don't know how, i've never been to no sorry i have been to comedy store i went in 2017 I went to, but i don't know what the car park looks like but um from what i've read online there's a car park that they have for comedians where you basically meant to park and i guess if you're past you're allowed to park in there or whatever something along those lines right and there's a specific car park where i think certain comics can park their car i don't know something some vip shit and he must have parked his massive car i think that must have been when he had the fucking truck right the infamous truck walk thing from annie lederman and it pissed off everybody because obviously it was super big and people couldn't park anywhere else and shit. It took up loads of room and he wasn't passed. So he was getting all these gigs. He was playing all these peak time shows because he was friends with Rogan and they'd go there all the time and hang out. And he wasn't passed at all. And he was terrible. So imagine him going after Rogan, going after Chris Lee with the same material he has now about fucking putting salsa on a cookie and calling out a Spanish biscuit or whatever he said. Like all this nonsense fucking comedy that he does. Imagine he was doing that back then when he was even horrible. Like now he's bad, but imagine back then when he first started so this idea that you know this comedy stuff thing is hilarious that arc I, I would have loved to have seen the comedians faces when they saw him perform man um what did eddie oh eddie d said um he doesn't get booked to the comedy store anymore they have an entirety new talent booker yeah yes i've seen that from what i've seen online they, they basically avoid him like the plague him and callan don't get booked on there even though callan's past it's strange too does he get does callan play there i don't know but from when i see flyers he's never on there at all even bring it even like invite shows and shit nothing because i remember the excuse was beforehand that whoever the new talent booker was was basically saying that oh because of covid they were basically um prioritizing people that were past or connected or was something to do with the store first and they weren't doing guest stuff but now COVID is kind of over and everything's opened up, you know, it still hasn't changed. So clearly they've changed their whole decision making around booking. And he doesn't talk about a comedy store at all anymore. 
in before it was always like oh how good is the comedy store right now the comedy store is amazing so many murderers all this nonsense right to make yourself look like a fucking legit comic and now you don't hear him talk about the comedy store at all zip deserve mm-hmm. a ring you know what i'm mm-hmm. saying I, i'm not going through the but, trenches but, like but, these guys but getting you know but i'll get there oh was he i don't know that jesse J- jesse g said um wasn't he trusting the comedy i don't know if he was actually he might have been i don't know if he went that far though he probably is smart enough not to do that because he doesn't want to really fuck himself over in that regard even though they, they basically said you know in no uncertain terms that he's he's over in that regard but he i don't think he'd be dumb enough to say that the humility of that like again i'm, I'm sorry but i really want to <laughs> drill this for the people listening on the other side Thank you, Bob Pigeon. <laughs> not getting high in your own supply. Like, I, you know, it's not obvious. You have to kind of know me, but like, no doubt, it is humility that is making my whole fucking engine go. Yes. I'm confident as fuck. I got bravado. I fucking go at it, yeah, right? Me too. But fuck, it is humility. Like, genuinely knowing I don't mean shit. Yeah. Like, I'm very aware. Like, I see it, and it's a fuck. No, you're not. Just because you're putting your shoulders down and looking down, you're not very aware at all, bruv. You're not at all. Not in the slightest. You still need the people to define bullying for you. You fucking... <laughs> this guy, man, he's clever, though. He's good. He's a good chameleon. He's a fucking amazing... Not comedian, chameleon. He was able to adapt. It wouldn't surprise me if he found out because the guy V is main thing his shtick is like self-awareness right and knowing yourself and how to all that sort of shit right so it's no surprise he probably knew this was one of his things and kind of worked it into his fucking explanation of his fucking origin story but fucking superpower so for listen you may think you're special you got it that's awesome confidence is everything you fucking match it up with real fucking self-awareness and humility which <laughs> not means nice. that self-awareness leads to patience yes. you're like i get that i'm not everyone's cup of tea yet yeah that I'm gonna have to earn I'll it, they're gonna there. have to get to know me under the hood. That's fucking power for yeah, all my, these kids. My main thing was when I got around all those comics and I was doing comedy and I knew it was gonna be a tough sell for a lot of people, I, my number one goal was I'm gonna earn the respect of my peers. Yeah. And the only way by doing that is they see me working my field. ass off. On the field. Yeah, so I- Work, see how we say stuff like this, working my ass off. My main priority wasn't to be, I want them to make sure, I want them to know that I'm funny because most comedians, when you hear them speak about being around other comedians, because it's a bit nauseating and it's a bit annoying, but the common thing they always say is about the hang, right? Oh, you have to be a good hang, like in a green room, not a weirdo, not fucking asking things and being strange and just not being somebody people can relax around, right? And the other thing they always talk about is wanting to make other comedians laugh. Like, so if it's an empty room and no one fucking came to buy tickets, you still want to have your comedic friend who you look up to or somebody that's a legend, you want to hear them in the back fucking howling. You want to hear them in the hallway cackling or sniggering and stuff. You want sniggering. I, I didn't say niggering. Sniggering something, right? You want to hear them doing that. And that's kind of what's going to give you joy. And that's what that sometimes is not something will spur you. When you hear other comedians also say, sometimes you have a shit show and the fact that an established comedian comes up and says, don't worry, it's okay, or gives you some word of encouragement. Those little things go a long way to just letting you carry on and have the strength to kind of go back out there and try again. But what does he mention all the time? Hard work, hustle, hard work, hustle, hustle. It's never ever about being funny. It's always about hustle. And that's probably why he's never going to be like funny really because he doesn't care about it. It just seems to all be hustle, hustle, hustle shit, which is weird. I would go up to the booker, whether it was the improv or Laugh Factory or the Ice House or the comedy store and go, hey, I'll, I'll be a door guy, man. I'll be a Good door guy. You. And yeah, I'll, right. I'll work however you want me to work. And the- but bro, this is the same guy that wouldn't that didn't want to do open mics, and now you're telling me he wants to be a door guy. He's so full of shit. That's the thing, also, to end this right because I don't want to carry on. This is just talking out of his ass here. To end this, because I think Cab- Cablu mentioned it right about he seems fake as fuck. In my opinion, I don't think there's anything wrong with being a douchebag. I really don't think so. I think we all have our kind of roles to play in life, right? We all have our roles to play, and sometimes. Even looking back to what I said about Bobby Lee sometimes, like if you know, if you kind of know yourself, it's no point trying to like change who you fundamentally are to your core. I don't agree with just letting yourself go, Wings of Redemption style, but sometimes embracing who you are and maybe finding people who are okay with it instead of pretending to be one way to get people around you and then change up on them is a fucked up thing. But I also think at the core, being a douchebag isn't bad. Just be honest with your douchebaggery. This is what I'm at. This is what I'm about. I'm jealous. I'm a hater. Um... I care about money. I care about success and fame and numbers and clout. Um, it doesn't matter what you say about me. I'm going to keep going on. Whatever it may be, right? Just present that as you. 
that's okay. But this idea that you present yourself as like, I'm the humble one, um, that's not nice, all that nonsense, define bullying, um, you know, it hurts me, even though I don't see this stuff, like I don't read anything online, people criticizing my stuff, is like they're homeless cats or they're homeless people, all this sort of stuff you throw out there, then to turn it back and try and be the humble one, it just doesn't work, like pick a lane, do you know what I mean? Stop. Pick, pick a lane, choose a lane. Either you're, the, either you're the fucking guy that doesn't care what anyone says and everyone else is a peon compared to you or you're the fucking... Um, yeah, stop bullying <laughs> or, you're the, or you're the kind one, yeah, the haters, but I don't know. I don't know. I just think he just, just, needs, to, he needs, just, he just needs to embrace his... Um, what they say in psychology? What is that? Um, is it a dark triad? Is it a dark triad they talk about in psychology? He just needs to embrace that side of him embrace the darkness you are who you are you know what i mean like we know we know already we've seen it with erawani like he, he thought that guy was a peon compared to him do you know what i mean like there was no respect there at all as a human being like we know what you're about like stop 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 lying just embrace who you are and keep it moving papa another clip here what's this one papa how old are you when did you do that let's see this about that as a young dude how old are you uh 38 <laughs> <laughs> this is why this guy this is why in my opinion i've said it before and here loads of times we've all got that friend in school that we grew up with who used to lie about everything and i remember i had a friend like that in school who would lie about i think i mentioned this before right um about um yeah, I mentioned before about this kid I had in school who used to lie about computer consoles. This is back when the Nintendo 64 was out, the Dreamcast was out, which kind of ages me, um, the PlayStation, whatever, one or two, something along those kind of lines, right? All those consoles were kind of competing for everyone's attention at the time, right? They were really expensive. Back in the day, consoles were fucking expensive relatively to the economy at that time, right? But especially to own all of them. So let's say they were all like 500 as a base mark. So you're basically paying two grand for like four computers. It's, it's insane. So... He lied and said he had every single one of them, right? And us as kids, because there was no such thing as like playing online, really, you had to go to each other's houses to play. So we would want to go around his house to come play, to play the stuff because, you know, maybe he had a Dreamcast and a Sega Saturn and a PlayStation, but then we only had a Nintendo. So we didn't know what those other ones looked like or what they played like. So we went to play them. We kept asking him, can we come to your house? Can we come to your house? Can we come to your house? Can come to, your house? Can come to your house play? And he never used to let us come to his house, right? Because we would always go to each other's house anyway. And then it got to a point where, in the end, he, we got invited into his house, not because of him, but because of his mum. Like, we just happened to be there. Like, oh, you guys are hungry. You want to something? Eat? Come, come, come. And he was like, his face was like shell-shocked. He wants to be there. And then when we got in there, we realised that he didn't have the consoles that he spoke about. He probably he only had one. And then when we confronted him, he basically said something like, oh, I let my cousin borrow it or something, which is bizarre. Like, you're not going to let your cousin borrow your whole console. Maybe a CD or a fucking game country, but not the whole thing. So, the, you know, basically, the, the, that's essentially proved that. And then, and then when, you walk, when you look back at it, I think back to it, there were so many other occasions where he lied about many, 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 many things. And this is one of those. Like, why would you just... It's such a weird lie to tell. Like, I'm 38. No, you're 39. How can you not know you're an age? But maybe this is Brendan Shaw Bennett. Maybe he generally doesn't know how old he is. I don't really know. <laughs> we got my uncle's house rent free. Mm -hmm. Felt like a loser coming off two fight losing streak, you know. So how old were you this time? <clears throat> Man, probably twenty five. Okay, keep going. Yeah, tw maybe twenty five, twenty four. <laughs> they will cut the stats up there. <clears throat> Man. Oh, good robot. Thank you for the donation, my friend. $5 super chat. It says here, great stream, my guy. You're making my shift easier. Oh, pleasure, man. I'm happy to do that. Thank you so much, as DSP would say. I'm glad. This was part of, one of the main things I enjoyed about long form podcasts, especially when I used to listen to Joe Budden podcasts, which I'm so pissed off that that original lineup isn't what it is. <laughs> Mo with the chicken tinger. Big up Mo in the chat. Big up Mo. Big up Mo. Um, one of the things that I enjoyed a lot about long form podcasts, right? Um, back in the day with like Joe Budden podcasts, when I used to listen to Rogan all the time, was that they were always over two hours, right? And when I was working retail and working in the fucking um, stock room or working in fucking factories doing picking and packing and shit, one of the 
best things that you could have listening in your earphones, especially one or two, would be podcasts. It just makes the time go by so quickly. It was so fucking good. It made those monotonous sort of like boring jobs seem such a breeze. And when they broke you know, the job on the podcast, when it ended, I was like so, so pissed off, man. Yeah, exactly. I repeat the name of the podcast. I said, honestly, I loved it so much. I really do love it. So I do appreciate you saying that, good robot. And if I can help in any kind of way to let the shift go by quickly, then I'm I'm absolutely um honored. Honored, my friend, honored. Probably twenty five. <laughs> yeah, do you start MMA yet, let alone the USC? <laughs> to be fair here, I don't think he's I don't think he knows he's lying. I just don't think he remembers how old he was. Like I just think he's that redacted. I don't think he remembers. I don't think so. Like he just as he said, he just goes. I don't think he remembers, personally for me. Tell um, there's, an, there's another clip here. What's it says? Brendan figures his seven years of comedy experience is worth 12 years of other comics experience. What? No way he said that. Okay, let's play this one. We have to play this. Excuse me? <laughs> what the hell? Oh, this guy's this guy's so confident despite his talent level. It's fucking great to watch from afar, man. What's Eddie D say here? Eddie D said... Um, Agassino played the Shaw Bly where he talks about selling comics out of his mum's closet. Oh yeah, I'll do another another one. Let me, let me take a clip of that too. I'm going to add that for the next show. That was an amazing lie too, man. He's made up so many stories about his fucking um, origins. Fucking amazing. Selling comics out. Of, like, oh, okay, cool. That's how he's an entrepreneur. Yeah, right. We believe you, mate. Press X for doubt on that one. Let's play this. Tell me a story because this, be, this is a fun story for me. Something you really worked on and if fucking destroyed uh does anything come to mind if i ask you that yeah it does because yeah. i think you know they, they any comic especially in new york you know there's so many legends there they'll tell you you really don't find your voice on stage until you've been to 10 years so mm. around seven the only caveat with that is remember especially when those older heads started they were doing open mics it was tough for them to get on stage so that doesn't even make any sense how can open mics be tough for you to get on stage the whole point of an open mic is that they're an open mic, right? They let anybody on stage to fill in the time. Some of them obviously are bringer shows where you need to kind of bring people in to buy drinks and shit. But for the most part, open mics are plentiful. There's ones probably every day in major, major, major cities. Every single day of the week, you can find an open mic to go and perform somewhere. Now, is it going to be great? Is it going to fill you with confidence? Is it going to make you feel enamored and feel like you made the right decision in your career choices? Is it going to help with your mental health issues? Probably not. But... You can get on stage or have some time in front of an audience any time you want. So this idea that it's hard to get on stage is such a lie. This guy fucking flunked. He flunked doing open mics like people that don't want to get called up for the war and shit. Do you know what I mean? Like he said, oh, I got a hamstring injury or he blew two of his hamstrings or made up some excuse that he has asthma or something. He didn't want to do open mics because he thought performing in front of his own audience was good enough when clearly... If anything, that's the main thing that fucked him up, I think, in terms of comedy. I don't think, actually, he's funny anyway. I think, you know, he's probably funny on podcasts, but not on stage. And you probably should think of a way of trying to replicate podcasts on stage and do some sort of show to make it work, in my opinion. But if he was going to try to be funny on stage, one of the things that would have helped him earlier on is if he just would have done open mics in front of people that don't know who he is and just did those a, a lot more than just doing his shows where he does i'm on tour i'm going to fucking san diego here's my dates come and see me uh, and you have to be a fan to go see him no just go and pull up in any place and go perform but he, for some reason he thought he was better than it which is fucking insane everyone else does open mics everyone everyone does open mics from chris rock to kevin hart to fucking eddie murphy when he's trying to come back to bill burr everyone does open mics except him like he doesn't do open mics he doesn't just rock up to a club and try and get some time on stage it's just all his own shows which is fucking weird which is why we got fucking you know jokes about fucking mexican biscuits and um about him trying to kill a dog or something with a gun like whatever do you know what i mean that's why we get the specials that we get the amount of time i've spent on stage in seven years probably equal to most comedians 12 to 14 years oh I was, and it, i'm super blessed and i'm not taking arrogance because i had somewhat of a name yeah. i was able to get on stage yeah, more sense. than these other comics oh my god <laughs> oh my god oh my god if you're a stand-up comedian and you hear that you must be spitting feathers mate oh my god he's saying that his seven years is better than your 12 what fam you have two of the worst rated specials in the history of stand-up specials in that time 
even with all the advantages, Brent, like Brian Callan in your corner, Joe Rogan in your corner, Comedy Store in your corner at the time, all the access to LA amenities. What's that? Um, what's that fucking um, talent agency called? CEE or CAA, whatever they're called, right? Major talent agency in your corner. All the links, all the bravado. You a former UFC guy. He looks the way he looks. Like, come on, bruv. Oh my God. But I think we all need that. We all need a bit of Brendan Schaub um, hubris, a bit of Brendan Schaub fucking arrogance, despite what the reality says. You know what I mean, God damn, this guy's delusional. It's not. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's another one. <laughs> These clips are fucking insane. Come for the Gary Vee show. Gary Vee unlocked a different part of Joe Rogan. I mean, so of Brendan Schaub, Joe Rogan, but he he unlocked a different part of him, man. In this fucking show, this is him talking about his success of his podcast. He goes, no, 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 I'm telling you, once a week, it's an hour. Two seconds. Yeah, yeah and I was like, uh, and he goes, we'll talk about fighting. And I, and, that's, and I went, hey, listen, I'll do it, but I don't want to talk about just fighting. We can touch on it, but I want to talk, you know, I'm into fashion. I'm a sneakerhead. You know, I like you cars. Be your full like, self. I, I just want it to be like yeah. a lifestyle thing. He's like, sure. So we start doing that thing, you know, gain yeah, traction. Like, I know. You know, at the time, especially, there's like Rogan, Mark Marin, I remember. Corolla, and then us. You guys were really yeah, doing it. Yeah, firing the kids. So that thing. To be fair to him, he's right in this regard. Back then when they first started and when I was a fan, the podcast was fucking bussing. It was bussing. It was fucking cool. It was good. I listened to it all the time. I never missed an episode. I thought it was fucking funny as hell. I loved their fucking chemistry, especially at the start because it felt like they were both on the same kind of place career-wise, right? Um, Callum was sort of stagnating. I think, you know, what was that show he was in? Um that show when a person gets drunk on fucking wedding night or whatever it's called, I forgot what it's called, um, whatever, he, was, he wasn't, he was you know, in a good place in his career, Brendan obviously come off the back of retiring from the UFC, maybe suffering the after effects of CTE, whatever it may be, started a new family, blah, 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 and they were both trying to make it in Hollywood at the same time, so it kind of felt like a kind of, um, you're watching them along their journey, you're cheering them on. Then, Mr., you know, Mr., uh, Mr. Kane Asada, he, he suddenly got some fucking success. Started so dyeing his hair different colors, wearing skinnier jeans, and then it, the, the whole fucking balance of the show went all the way weird. And then we ended up with this fucking shit show we have at the moment. So this is, it's a bragging rights to say, yeah, they were there before, but to see how far they've fallen over the years is pretty crazy, especially when you consider how easy I think the platform, the, the, um, doing a podcast is of that level you just have to keep it churning you just have to keep it chugging along reinvent it here or there but you don't need to do too much in terms of reinventing the wheel or time to make it successful um and they really really did a really good job in terms of shooting themselves in the foot and essentially destroying something that was pretty decent single-handedly because they all just you know through allegations and through just you know arrogance and entitlement and fucking disregard of the fans all this sort of stuff kind of just turned it in his head and it hasn't been the same since so you can brag about it but you know it is what it is oh, I'm gonna see this one this is about him talking about the NFL and then I want to play one more I think or a couple more maybe and then I'm gonna bounce and let's get this one up here but big up everyone for tuning in. If you are tuning in wherever you are and it's the first time of you locking into my streams, the only thing I ask from you is to smash the like if you like it. And of course, if you want to come back another time, click subscribe because I have a podcast I always do here called the Agassino Zynga Show. I also DJ. I also do other stuff on this channel too sometimes. So if you want to check out my other bits of content, then please subscribe. If you don't, you just enjoy the show, then relax and enjoy it, innit, brother? Enjoy. Did it's you get meat did factory. you did you get any preseason snaps? No, that's, no, I got hurt. I got, got hurt. hurt. Yeah, I hurt my hamstring. Went back home. We had some other. They released me. We had some other offers to you know give to the Dolphins or practice squad stuff. Yeah, practice squad stuff. And then yeah, I've always been realistic with myself, and I'm I I I think my best trait, whatever it is is I, I never just identify as that. So a lot of athletes, and you know this in the line you're in, a lot of athletes, when they get done playing or if it ends for whatever reason, God forbid, they don't know how to not identify as, you know, an NBA player, right. uh, NFL player, UFC fighter. I never saw myself as just that, ever, ever, ever. It's a lie because he always wanted to be an NFL player. It didn't work out because he wasn't good at it. 
and then he ended up being able to be successful in segueing into UFC at the time when UFC the skill level wasn't as high as it is now and you could basically be a decent athlete and still be able to you know make it in the UFC now you probably can't anymore you probably have to have a real good foundation of mixed martial arts or combat skills or some sort of boxing wrestling in order to come into UFC you can't just be a good athlete and segue into it we've already seen it with some other NFL guys who are kind of try their hand at it it didn't really work out too well he was meant to be an NFL player it didn't work out clearly but this idea that he always wanted to be a comedian is fucking, it's a crazy lie, but let's be charitable again, because I want to be fair. I don't think it's a bad thing to invent these sort of weird origin stories for yourself, because I'm thinking about a lot from what I said about Andrew Schultz with him lying or not about how, oh, this streamer didn't want me to put this joke on there because they're too woke, so now I'm going to bet on myself and spend my life savings and put it on my own platform. All those kind of embellishments and white lies or stories you're telling Oh, isn't that it's not such a bad thing it's sort of like a hero's journey thing you're kind of hoping the story will it's, no it's kind of like a perfect marketing right you're telling a story that's what marketing is you're trying to tell a story you're creating a scenario you're allowing people to kind of imagine um the scenario live through it kind of you know live li kind of live in your shoes a little bit as they're going through i don't know you know what i mean in that regard so maybe lying and embellishing your origin story isn't such a bad thing because you get to i guess people to maybe i don't know I, don't, I just don't like it personally i don't think there's any point because his actual story is still interesting anyway his real story the, the fact that he came from the family he comes from the fact that he tried to become an NFL player and he's dead set on it. The fact that he was friends with that guy, I forgot who it was, who he was friends with, the super Christian dude who ends up being a good uh, NFL. They end up all being successful and he's the only one that doesn't get picked. He's got that really heartbreaking story about him getting the wrong or having the wrong number on his shirt and shit. There's some real strength to come from that. Oh, I come from this really place where I was, I had this dream that I really wanted. It didn't work out and it crushed me, but I was somehow able to claw myself out of the hole and find my way to UFC, which then led me to doing what I'm doing now. Do you know what I mean? It's still a great story. So this idea of like embellishing and saying, I was always, um, Eddie, what you call it? Eddie Murphy was my North Star and all this sort of stuff is my hero. It's like, no, he wasn't your hero. Like, stop lying. Like, it's just a lie. Um, what people saying in the chat here? Eddie said he's grasping that pearls again, hand on the chest. Exactly, exactly, exactly exactly there we go look there it is the pearl hands um it's not nice that's not nice honestly it does it hurts me i know i act like it doesn't hurt me but it hurts me it really does the comment it hurts me ever ever do you think it's because you had this other passion did you do you feel subconsciously or maybe <clears throat> consciously in the back of your mind you're like i'm gonna get the comedy somehow i think so i think so because also in the ufc I lost a fight and I knew like my surroundings were a little bit toxic and I, I need to make a change. And I grew up in Venice. Throwing his coaches under the bus, nice. Venice Beach as a kid. I, I now, we, now, now he's supposed to be a Venice Beach person. For anybody that's been following Brendan and the TFAT K and stuff, have you ever heard him speak about Venice Beach? Have you ever heard him say he's from Venice Beach? I know he says, what was that? His grandfather or great uncle, the guy that he really speaks about, the one that was a bodybuilder. He might have lived in Venice Beach, I think. But does he ever speak about growing up in Venice Beach? Going to visit your uncle a couple of times for the summer doesn't mean you grew up there. The lies are just incredible, bro. Like there's always a there's always a kernel of truth there, but there's never fucking it's always embellished. Always. Like it's just crazy, this guy. Honestly, it's fucking nuts. I grew up in Venice Beach and for whatever reason when I'd get to LA, it just I don't know what it is. It felt like home. That Even fucking, though I wasn't born there, but I grew sunshine. up there. there there's something about <laughs> it. felt like I'm a, you know, I grew up there in my life. That sounds like a guy. The, the sunshine, the women, the money. Come on, man. This dude, bruv. <sighs>